Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, the five minute read maker. I'm responding today to a question from Alex. He says, first, I'd like to thank you for all the read making videos you have made and are making. They provide much needed clarity for a beginning read maker like me. You're welcome, Alex, of course. Um, one question I have always had is what does breaking in a read do? I know some of us don't even really believe in breaking in a read and I've never really noticed that big a change. What an interesting question, right? I've never been asked that before. I just sort of assumed that everyone felt like I did about having a broken in read as sort of the ideal uh, state of being. Um, I think for me, a brand new read generally has a pretty strong opening and a springiness to it, which settles down a lot after a couple of practice sessions. This happens partly as a result of me like mashing it into place consistently in my mouth. Um, but also I think over a few cycles of soaking and drying, the cane begins to break down a little bit, as all organic materials do. And for most of us, there's an optimal amount of breakdown that we really like. Somewhere between brand new green springy cane and mushy old smelly exhausted reeds. The degree of this that is desirable is going to vary from person to person. So here's what I do. Before I go out in public, I want my read broken down enough so that it does not exhaust me to play, and so the response is in a completely predictable place, so I'm not guessing in real time just how hard to tongue or how much air I have to put behind my attacks. Um, I, I just basically don't want the public to have to see me sweat. I want it to look easy. But I don't necessarily want to scrape it down to that perfect place because the more wood I remove, the more quickly the whole thing will break down and wear out. Um, it's easy to over scrape early on to try to get a read to your comfort level, but that read will then not really last. So instead I try to play the read in. Generally I start with a read that I've finished once or twice. It's gone through my four day process. It's been wound and then rough scraped and then finished and then finally selected from that group of finished reads. Maybe scrape just a titch more to get it polished and really vibrating. So here's a read like that. I finished this one from uh, rough scraped last night and I just tweaked it a little bit more this morning. So I, I haven't done any more than just play a quick little noodle on it. Just at a glance, I can see that the opening is much bigger than I'm actually gonna be really comfortable with. The beep is fine. The crow is okay. The reed feels to me a little bit big, a little bit muscular, and I have to chomp in my mouth to really control it. But ideally, I'm going to spend about 20 minutes on this reed doing warm-ups like long tones, scales, maybe even etudes, and trying to fight the impulse to scrape it. Um, it definitely often seems to grow during this time, and usually by the end of the session, I'm super happy to put it away. The next day, I'll re-soak it, polish it once more, and try again. If I have to scrape a little bit during that session, I'll do it, but that read is probably pretty close to good and pretty close to stable. By that point, it's usually ready to do some real practicing on, or take to the orchestra. Uh, meanwhile, though, as I'm breaking in a read, I'll do my actual working practice session on reads that already play comfortably. Ideally, like this one might be tomorrow. I like doing my work on a read that makes me work, though, so that when I get to uh, rehearsal, I can put on something comfier and older, not too old, uh, and enjoy myself. Now, here's a read that's well broken in, but it's not yet old. I would happily use this in an orchestra rehearsal. Um, without effort in my mouth, the opening is what I want, the crow is what I want. <laughs> seems like the uh, tone quality has smoothed out a little bit and I'm not having to blow terribly hard or work terribly hard to play in tune. Um, the breaking in can go too far though, right? Here's one that's been in my case for a long time. It's funny looking. <laughs> I have to soak it for a long time to really get the water to penetrate. And it probably doesn't have more than one or two services left in it. But if I need something reliable and safe, if, for example, the weather is changing dramatically, or if I need to be very soft or flexible, or if I'm exhausted and I just need to make something work till the end of the day, this kind of read is here for me. For me, this one is a little bit almost too closed. It's a little bit too easy. And I don't know if you can hear it, but it feels like the highest register, um, like the high C, high B, um, those notes are a little bit wild and I really feel like I have to support them and take care of them a lot with my mouth. 
they're a little bit thin and I have to manage them. Um, which is sort of what I what my experience is with a reed that is older and much much maybe too broken in. Still, it's nice to have a safety net sitting in the back of my case. On this same topic, uh, several times I've had people write to me that the reeds they ordered from me were too hard. I believe them. Generally my strengths are heavier than the commercial reeds you find on the market and it's true that I send finished reeds but not broken in reeds. Generally, I coach them to scrape a little bit in key places, but sometimes they're not comfortable doing this and they send the reeds back to me. And I always unbox them and soak them and do a tiny bit of scraping. But honestly, I believe the soaking and drying and sitting around a little bit has as much to do with the break-in process as the knife work. When I return the reeds, I get very positive responses and gratitude, which delights me, of course, but which a little bit of playing in and patience and maybe some microscopic scraping might have solved too. I hope this has been helpful to you. This has been a five minute read maker lesson. You can follow these short videos right here on YouTube or here on my Facebook page, Janet Ingle Oboist, and you can subscribe if you wish. If you have questions or concerns or you want to order reads or cane, you can find me at JanetIngle.com. In fact, I would love to hear what else I can help you with and what my next short video should address for you. Let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.